Han är er skulda för antisemitism, rasism och för att ha förnekat Holocaust. Han är er inbjudet till litteraturfestivalen på Lillehammer, men det förde till så mycket bråk att invitationen blev tagen tillbaka. Nu förbjuder polisen sig på bråk och demonstrationer när David Irving är er väntad till Lillehammer i morgon. Men akkurat nu är er han här i tabloid. Welcome. Thank you very much for having me here. What is your reaction to the fact that the invitation you got from the festival at Lillehammer was withdrawn? I was first of all very proud to receive the invitation, and then I was very insulted, not only that it was withdrawn so quickly, but the manner in which they withdrew it. Uh, they, they said, quite wrong in my view, they said that they had invited me as an example of a liar. Um, and I, it was a very quick excuse on their part, I think. Um, I'm, I think was the, the one honourable thing that happened was the Stieg, uh, Seta Bettman, the man who was the cultural director of the festival. I think he resigned. But he's the one who said that you were invited because you're a falsifier uh, of history. I, I don't think he said that. I think that the president of the festival finally said that at, at a press conference. I think what he's written, and yeah. that's what he said. That's so. Mm. Well, I, I don't know where he gets that from. Um, I think the problem is that too few people in Norway have read my books. A lot of people in the rest of the world have read my books, and I think if more people read my books, they would see that I'm not the way that I'm described. And a lot of people in the rest of the world say you are a falsifier. Yes, and, and we know what their agenda is. They don't like the books I write because I write what I find actually happened. I write politically incorrect history. Mm. I, I think I write the kind of history that will stand up for a hundred years, whereas most modern history is written for the day. Mm. You, you, you reach a point when you write history as a historian where you have a choice. Either you write money, write books to make money, mm. or you write books to... As Churchill said, the job of a historian is to find out what happened and why. And that's what you're doing. I try and find out what happened, and if I even if I don't like what happened, um, even I know my readers won't like what happened. I write it the way it was. We'll come back to that in a moment. I just want your comment on the fact that uh, your hotel reservations mm -hmm. were cancelled uh, too. Yeah, it's nothing new. Um, they they can't debate me, and so they silence me. Uh, my opponents around the world have used methods to try and silence me, beginning in a campaign in about 1991. I started what I call my international campaign for real history, mm. like real beer in England, the real ale campaign. And real history, I think, is the, is the kind of history that you write straight from the archives into the books with no political input. Mm. And once that real history began to be published, with the new edition of my Hitler biography, for example, then behind the scenes this campaign started to silence me and I've seen the evidence, I've seen the, the secret meetings of political groups and so on. What kind of political groups? I was the Holocaust Educational Trust in Britain. Uh, in November 1991 they had a secret meeting which was attended by a non-Jewish historian, David Fox, a very upright, um, respectable historian. And he was so angry when he heard them plotting to put pressure on my publisher, Macmillan, one of the biggest English publishers. He, he resigned. He said, I'm not going to go along with this. But, but, but has it crossed your mind that people are deeply offended by your allegations? Yes. They don't believe that you're mm. telling the truth. Yeah. And uh, to the people who lost their whole families mm. in the concentration camps, what you're saying uh, is pro uh, preposterous. A lot of people died in World War II. Not just Jews, not just Gypsies, not just the homosexuals. A lot of ordinary Norwegians, Germans, Dutch and French and other countries Innocent people died. I think that the real crime in World War II wasn't genocide, it was killing of innocent people in what I call innocenticide. That was the real crime. Once you start limiting it just to one group of people and say, well, it's a crime when they did the Jews, but it wasn't a crime when it happened to the people in Hiroshima or Coventry or Dresden. That's well, where, as, a, as an Englishman, I say, no, I want to write liberal history, a level, level play. We have to finish this thing about Lillehammer uh, before yes. we go deeply into yes. it in the subject. If I go in there, in a few days' time. Yeah, have you decided to go... Anyway, yes. <laughs> what are you going to do there? Yes, I mean, people think they can silence me by saying, okay, we're not going to invite you. Norway is a free country. I can go if I want. But it's also a secret. But it's also people read to me from Norway. They did? Saying, David Irving, we want to hear you speak. I don't know who they are. But they read and say, we really want to hear you speak. I've got the list of 50 or 60 They might be neo-Nazis. They might be. I hope they are. Because Why? They are, is, it, is it so good to be embraced by the neo-Nazis? No, I don't want to be embraced by them, but I think having neo-Nazis in an audience is a good thing, because then I can then say, hey fellas, you're slightly wrong here, and you're right there. They need to be corrected in their views. So they're slightly wrong? They're a, a lot wrong in some respects. <laughs> they're very clever. 
But uh, what are you going to speak? About? What are you going to speak about? When are you going to speak? Where are you going to speak? Mm -hmm. It's also secret. I, I, it, it has to be a secret. I mean, you've seen today the reasons why I have to keep my movement secret. Even though I announced yesterday that I was already in Oslo, there was a big crowd of unpleasant people waiting for me at the airport today when I did arrive. So I have to be careful. I, I, I've suffered a lot of uh, real violence from from people who don't want me to speak. So what are you going to speak about? Um, when I go to the Hammer at the end of this week, I'm going to be speaking on one special aspect of history, which is the kind of history that you can write if you use just one category of documents. And I, these are the decoded documents. The, in Britain, we had the world's best decoding organization. We had 30,000, 30,000 experts mm. decoding German. And you go into all these, and yes. you also found and news mean, about Norway. Yes. What yes. is that? You, you find things that set you back. You think, whoa, this isn't what I believed because it's not the politically correct version of history. About Norway, for example, I wrote my very first uh, or second book about the German atomic bomb project. Here in Norway, you had the only source of heavy water at Denmark, yes. uh, North Hydro. And um, I wrote a book about the German atomic bomb project. Now, 44 years later, I'm reading the, G the German messages decoded by the British, which reveal that two glider loads of British commandos landed Operation Freshman. Mm. Uh, one, one, one glider crashed, the other glider uh, went, uh, went missing. The, the one that landed safely here in, in uh, Norway, uh, 20 commandos were, were rounded up by the Norwegian police. The Norwegian police turned these British commanders over to the Germans and the Germans executed them all. It, it, it is common knowledge that yes. these uh, people, these yes. Englishmen, were killed by the yes. Germans. Yes. But you're blaming this on the Norwegians. Well, the, the, the wider lesson to be learned here is that just as in France, where the French like to believe that they were a nation of resistors, and that the resistance in France is the most important thing that they did in World War II, if you read the German documents, you hardly notice the resistance. It didn't happen. And now the same in Norway. You find out that in Norway, the Norwegians were a peace-loving people who were very happy once the, the hostilities had ended in 1940, and you did a very peaceful war until 1945. Mm. And you were quite happy with the Germans here. But are you saying that Norwegians collaborated? They, they collaborated yeah. to, to a large extent? Yes. They, 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 they collaborated to, to the degree the Germans needed. Very, very few resistance cells in Norway. And the decoded messages make, make this case quite clear. That Norwegians collaborated? That Norwegians collaborated with the Germans. So you have the proof? It's, it's there in these tens of thousands of pages of decoded messages. The problem is the academics are far too important to do the groundwork of reading through these files. But, but, but how am I going to believe this? Because you've been accused of, of, of tampering with the evidence, yeah. of changing words. Absolutely. And there was even um, a, a lawsuit yeah. uh, in England which you lost. And the conclusion of that lawsuit was that you are a falsifier of history. Yes, so how am I going to believe that what you're saying about Norway is the truth? Um, I'm happy to, to rest on my record as an author. Uh, in England, my father used to say, just British justice is the best that money can buy. And in the case you're referring to, which I fought in the year 2000 against an American academic who called me a Holocaust denier. Yeah, and you lost. She, so she, she was proven right. She rounded up $13 million with which she bought the High Court in England. She bought the court. She bought the witnesses. And you were in The witnesses were paid nearly a million pounds each to give their opinion about David Irving. And so a witness said, well, yes, David Irving's alive. He's a falsifier. Where's the cash, please? But you lost. Yes. At the end, you lost yes, because records, she had no money. The records show I'm right. I'll give you one example. Uh, the judge said David Irving said that 130,000 people were killed in the British air raid on Dresden. The real figure is 25,000, according to the judge. Now, in the decoded messages, only two weeks ago, in Britain, in the British archives, as I'm now reaching the end of reading the decoded messages, there's the decoded messages, message from the police chief of Dresden, who reports to Berlin, he says, we have 100,000 missing in Dresden. So my figure was correct. Okay. I'm quite happy to rest on my record. Um, you seem to be very infatuated by Hitler, your real project. Uh, How are you infatuated by him? Um, I you? regard myself as his ambassador to posterity. If I can put it like this, the average journalist, and I think you went through a journalist school yourself, your editor will say when you're writing something nasty about David Irving, is he dead yet? If he's dead, then we can write what we want. My attitude as a historian is the opposite. If David Irving is dead, then we've got to be very careful what we write because he can't defend himself. And that's what I say about Adolf Hitler. So much has been written about Adolf Hitler since the end of World War II that people think they can write what they want about him.